Tartu, with its 100,000 inhabitants, is the second largest town in Estonia. It's the main intersection of the southeastern part of the country, an industrial and educational center. The Emma Yogi River runs through the center of the town. Today, Tartu is the only town in Estonia to have joined the town development directions of the European Union. The town has worked out its own Agenda 21, a local plan of sustainable development. Up until the 1990s, there was a steady increase in the number of inhabitants of Tartu. But after that, the number began to decline. One reason was the closing of many large industrial companies. Another reason was the shutdown of Radi airfield. The Soviet military personnel and their families had lived in the rundown residential area of Yamamoisa. The houses were built by soldiers with no formal training in building. Surrounding the blocks of houses there were barracks, many of them still in existence. The living conditions in this area are not sanitary, which is mostly the fault of the local inhabitants. A change in people's attitudes is needed. Frida moved from one barrack to another when the last one fell into disrepair. She'll probably have to move again soon. Электроёли, вот все, мая, ну, и саню маль. Ну, он был брошенный, этот дом, и даже света нет, электро, ну, как жить? Да, по он то ли же. Ну... Behind the barracks there are kitchen gardens. The town government has decided that this area should be converted into a new and attractive residential district. Today it's just a plan and life here goes on undisturbed. While the newcomers don't have a place to go with their children, the older inhabitants often meet in the yards and spend their time in various ways. They have their own traditions. They put on nice clothes and go outside to take walks and show off. The newcomers are unaware of this. They don't even realize that the dump was created in part from huge truckloads that came from other parts of the town. They don't want to pay the garbage companies and feel that if the neighborhood has a bad reputation, then it's okay if everything is dumped there. If people plan to stay in a place for a short period only, these things bother them, but after a while they get used to them and see no reason to do anything. There's no home feeling that induces the inhabitants themselves to start taking care of their environment. 
The street names of Supilin with words like peas, beans, melons and potatoes come from the fact that vegetables used to be grown here. Most of the buildings are from the late 19th and early 20th century. The town structure remains from the times of gardening and there are still large gardens behind the houses. Supilin is a good example of how, during the Soviet era, a deserted area could form right next to the town centre. There were once plans to tear down the whole district and build blocks of houses instead. In the meantime, no investments were made and now the houses are in a rather poor condition. The new general plan will densify housing while maintaining the atmosphere of Supilin. Anna's family has renovated a house that was built in the beginning of the last century. But right next to it stands the ruins of a house that has been burned out several times. Anna's family isn't going to wait for support. They are acting now by cleaning up the yard of the ruined house. The co-owner hasn't been doing anything to help, but if a neighbor won't allow it, the house cannot be demolished. There are some intricate laws that haven't been used yet and that an ordinary citizen wouldn't even think about. There are people who want to develop that town, like Raivo, who also lives next to a burnt out house. About 2,000 people live in Supilin. The inhabitants are very diverse, ranging from artists, professors, actors and teachers to the unemployed and homeless. This unusual neighborhood houses many creative people. The inhabitants of Supilin get their drinking water primarily from the central system, but there's no water supply in Freddy's home, so it's his responsibility to fetch about four containers of water every day, although his family still pays for 25 buckets for the sewer system, since that's the company's minimum tariff. The family of four lives very economically. They never use water only once. Hair rinsing water is suitable for washing. They collect rainwater for washing the car or for watering the flowers. Water is so valuable. Most of the artesian wells in Supilin have been closed down because the subsoil water was damaged by the wells. They wanted to close this last one too, but Freddy's mother threatened that then she would take water from the fountain at the town square. Praegu minu minu jaoks ei ole linn muud teinud ära kasutada end supilinna. Kui oli vaja munagi üle sinna lauluväljaku äärde enne suurt laulupidu, siis võeti meie tänavalt kivid ära öelda, et need ongi juba koledad. Et see tänav on tänav mingi, mingi munakivi tänav, et, et kohad te oli katkin. Aga et samas olid need ainsad kivid, mida mööda ma sain kuivala kevad üle sügisel linna minna. Praegu enam ei saa, sest nii on mürgas. Ja kui liiklust oli vaja suunata, siis ka supilin on tore, siit saab nüüd läbi käia. The town won't pay for building a waterworks anymore. 
Whoever wants water has to pay. On Kartli Street, there are mostly retired people living. Repairing the streets is the town's job, but there's no point doing it before a water system is installed. So Mayre and Andres can only hope that someday new people will come who can afford a waterworks. On the other hand, new well-to-do people would mean more cars. Since the houses of Supilin are built on peat, the passing of every car can be felt indoors. In spite of everything, Supilin has its charm. It's close to the center of the town and not far away from the river. There's a good deal of unused land that's private property, but there's also a building site that belongs to the town, which is the object of an international architectural contest. Soon they will be building there. Those who build in Supilin or Yamamoisa usually buy their building materials in the former industrial area. The whole area was once administered by a major building company whose customers were the collective farms. The company disappeared with the old system. Dekora rents a building that once was meant to be a gym, but was never finished. The idea of sustainable development comes from more well-to-do societies and has a message of warning for Estonia. Estonians, with their sound attitude to many things, usually think very economically about their own situation. But how much consideration do they give to other people, nature or the environment? Estonia approved the Sustainable Development Act in 1995, but much work still has to be done. Town officials and citizens should be educated so that the decisions affecting housing and natural resources will ensure tolerable conditions for people living here today. <laughs>